Let's see, are we going again tonight? Uh, we're past uh, T minus two minutes negative. All right, as you heard there, NASA scrubbed the launch of the Parker Solar Probe early Saturday morning in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And the probe considered NASA's most ambitious project to study the sun is now scheduled to launch on Sunday morning. And joining us now to discuss is CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. Always good to see you, Bill. Thanks. Glad to be here. All right, so tell us what happened here that caused the probe to be pushed back to Sunday. Well, they had a lot of problems during the countdown. They uh, delayed 20 minutes late Saturday night. Uh, then they had another problem inside of 10 minutes that delayed them a little bit. And finally, uh, just a minute and 55 seconds before launch, they declared a hold. There was some issue with the helium regulator. They didn't really specify what the problem was, but they didn't have any time left in the launch window to resolve it. So they were forced to scrub for 24. And, you know, these things happen. It's not a big deal. I mean, the point is with a $1.5 billion mission, they absolutely want to make sure they get it right. Uh, so they just decided uh, it would be safer to delay one day, try again Sunday morning. All right, NASA calls this its most ambitious sun study spacecraft ever. Why is that? You know, lots of the space missions, the planets have a big gee whiz factor, but this one's got a lot of gee whiz. I mean, if you think about it, they're going to send this spacecraft within 4 million miles of the sun. And that doesn't sound like it's very close, but it's well within the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona. And if you think about a, an analogy they're using, if you put the Earth and the sun at opposite ends of a football field, this probe would be on the four-yard line on the sun's end. Uh, so it's going to be very close indeed. It's going to be very, very hot. Uh, but it's got some instruments on board to answer some very fundamental questions about the sun that scientists have been waiting to figure out for decades. Ah, it's going to be extremely hot. Bill, what steps does NASA have to take to uh, create a spacecraft that can get so close to the sun? Well, I think the biggest technological challenge was developing a heat shield uh, that could stand up to this. Now, the corona, the outer atmosphere, temperatures reach millions of degrees, but it's a very tenuous uh, you know, gas. And so the spacecraft itself doesn't get that hot, but it will get up to around 2,500 degrees. That's hotter than lava. So one side of that heat shield has got to be able to withstand those temperatures and keep the instruments and all the, you know, the flight computer, all those sensitive uh, pieces of the spacecraft in the shade, as it were. And they're supposed to stay at a balmy 85 degrees. So really an achievement to develop a, a heat shield that's this capable. 2,500 degrees, wow. All right, what major questions do scientists hope to answer with this mission? Well, I think there's really two big issues that they want to resolve. One is, what heats up the solar corona? Uh, if you look at the visible uh, surface of the sun, the thing we see when we go outside and glance up briefly, that's at about 10,000 degrees. But as you move away from that into the corona, the temperature suddenly jumps up to several million degrees. Uh, the mechanism that provides that heating is a mystery. It may involve magnetic fields and electrically charged particles interacting. Could be, uh, you know, countless little what they call nano flares going off to pump heat into it, but they don't know. Uh, so the Parker Solar Probe hopefully uh, will be able to answer that question. And one of the other major questions is what accelerates the solar wind? You know, we're all familiar with that. Uh, those are the electrically charged particles that come away from the sun. They hit Earth's magnetic field and cause such spectacular aurora. Uh, but they get accelerated to supersonic velocities in the corona, and that's another thing. They want to try to understand what's going on in hopes of being able to predict big space weather storms, things that can affect Earth. All right, so much to learn and understand about the sun and the man who could teach us all, Bill Harwood. Bill, thank you. <laughs> sure thing.